America's most talked about program. Brought to you by new Liquid Prell, the liquid shampoo that's extra rich. To leave your hair looking radiantly alive. And Crest Toothpaste with Florestan. And now here he is, Mr. This Is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I want you to meet a most remarkable lady, our honored guest for tonight, from Worcester, Massachusetts, Mrs. Aris Ann Ward. Stand here just for a moment. Good evening, Miss Ward. Good evening, Mr. My name is Edwards. Now, Mrs. Ward, I'm sure that uh, our audience would be interested in knowing. I, I know it's wrong to ask a young girl how old she is, but do you mind if I ask you how old you are? No, I don't mind. How, how, would you mind telling us how old are you? Ninety-five years old. The first day. Ninety-five years young. You were born into slavery while Abraham Lincoln was president. Yes, yeah, the second year of war. As a matter of fact, you, right, you've lived through the administrations of half the presidents of the United States. This is one of the times we have told our subject about recreating her life, ladies and gentlemen. But Mrs. Ward does not know who's to appear on our stage here. So come along and sit down, Mrs. Ward. You sit right over there on that sofa. Your multitude of friends in Worcester call you Grandma Ward. Uh, you're supposed to be wrong if I called you Grandma Ward. Sit here now. Call you anything I want. Huh? That's pretty. You're giving me quite a leeway there, you know. All right. How did you uh, make the trip out here from Worcester, Grandma Ward? On airplane. This was your very first trip in an airplane. First trip. All right, but it couldn't help when it got off the airplane. It couldn't help Oh, you couldn't, huh? <laughs> that changed in a few minutes, didn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, not because it make TWA happy, I would <laughs> You insisted on flying, but an adventurous spirit at the age of 95, eh? Now, <laughs> yeah, we got a little stool for you to put your feet under. Yeah. Not that you need it, but it might be a little tall, this bench. We learned about you, Grandma Ward, through a letter written to This Is Your Life. We like to do the lives of the people uh, who are written in to us. But this was written in by one of your neighbors who lives in the same housing project, the Great Brook Valley Gardens in Worcester. And here is that admiring neighbor, Mrs. Vera Teichmuller. Here is Vera Teichmuller. <laughs> Come, you sit here, Mrs. Teichmuller. This is, this is the uh, first of many surprises for you, Grandma Ward. Mrs. Teichmuller, in your letter, you told us how much Grandma Ward does for her neighbors. Now, uh, why are you grateful to her? Mr. Edwards, I was operated on for cancer, and I had uh, lost everything I had in the flood, even a decorating business. So Grandma always helps me and comforts me, and she says, when I go to her, she always tells me, Vera, you have forgotten how to pray right. Now you just take your troubles to the Lord and leave them there. And after that, I feel real good, huh? I feel better again. The seedling planted so many years ago is at 95, a vigorous tree giving freely its fruits of wisdom. In a few moments, we will relive the life of Mrs. Aris Ann Ward, born a year before the Battle of Gettysburg, and when this country had but 34 states. Meanwhile, Here's exciting news from Liquid Prell for all you women who want hair that's radiantly alive. Hair that looks radiantly alive makes a woman feel radiantly alive. Now at last, there's a liquid shampoo that's extra rich to give your hair that radiantly alive look. It's new Liquid Prell. New Liquid Prell does wondrous things for hair. There's a glorious difference between Liquid Prell and all other shampoos. New Liquid Prell is extra rich. That's why it leaves hair looking radiantly alive. Some other shampoos are thin and watery, some too thick and sticky. They can actually dull your hair. 
but extra rich liquid prell is just right with radiant beauty in every drop. To keep your hair looking radiantly alive, use extra rich liquid prell. Now, thank you very much, Bob Warren. If it gets uh, chilly, you tell us and we'll put the coat back on there. Mrs. Aris Ann Ward, Grandma Ward, before we journey back 95 years to the beginning of your eventful life, a life begun in slavery, we have another pleasant surprise for you. Four of the many neighbors' children who cluster around you in your little apartment in Worcester, Massachusetts, and whom you so dearly love. And here they are. First, Idella Hazard and her brother, Louie. There's Louie, and here's Idella. Got to see them all. And... <laughs> Here's Gina Teichmuller, you know Gina, of course, and her brother, Winston Teichmuller. <laughs> oh, my. Hi, Bellin. Why do you love Grandma Ward? Because she's fun, and she's given me many things. My sister had an Agora hat, but I did it, and Grandma bought me one, too. Well, wasn't that nice? How about you, Gina? Well, Grandma teaches us blessings. Have you children had enough to eat today? Is that right, Winston? She gives us cookies and she's always nice to us. I'll bet she is, boy. And uh, you, Louie? Grandmother, she always says, honor your father and your mother. Uh-huh. Well, you've always held that uh, uh, living up to the fifth commandment is responsible for your long life, Grandma Ward. What is that commandment? Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long from the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Yeah, I want us to live up to it. I praise my children the same. I teach these children the same. That's what they said. Now, you children only know Grandma Ward through what she's done for you, you see. But uh, you don't know the story of her life, I don't think, all of it, do you? So if you'll sit around here, just sit down anywhere, and uh, we'll tell that unusual story for you and our viewers. Okay, kids, is that all right? Yes. Okay. Now, Mrs. Arizan Ward, this is your life. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, January 1st, 1862. You're born, Grandma Ward, about nine months before Lincoln issues the Emancipation Proclamation that will free you and your people. Your birthplace, Bear Creek, near Jacksonville, North Carolina. You're the fifth of seven children and your entire family are slaves owned by a Mr. Owen Huggins who hires out your family to work the nearby plantation of a Mr. Willis. In uh, what part of Mr. Willis's house did your entire family live? In the kitchen. Yes, and uh, where were you born? In the kitchen. On that very day, your mother cooks dinner for the Willis family, but your birth prevents her serving. That's right. Sweet Lord, sweet chariot. 1865, the year tragedy in an audience at Ford's Theater mocks the comedy on stage as our 16th president, Mr. Lincoln, is assassinated. You're three years old. And this is the year of your earliest memory of a far homelier event. Your mother prepares a, well, a kind of a mouthwash for your little sister, Josephine. Joe, who had a sore mouth. Now, what, what was the mouthwash made of? Made out of a singing bark tea and alum and honey. Oh, kind of sweet, and I drank it. <laughs> you, you did? I did. <laughs> you actually drank alum. No wonder you remembered that for 92 years. <laughs> oh, 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 freedom. Oh, 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 freedom. 1868 now. Remembering? The 14th Amendment is adopted, giving citizenship to the Negroes. An unconditional surrender grant becomes our 18th president. Although your family is no longer in slavery, they still work on the Willis Plantation, and you go to school for a single term. Now, uh, what did you uh, learn at school, Grandma Ward? Uh, well, one learned, thing in particular, you remember? I learned my alphabet backwards and forwards. Can you still recite the, the alphabet backwards? C-Y-W-B-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-I-S-T-F-E-D-C-B-A. How about that? Can you still do that? Forget it. She tried to teach you, but you kept on forgetting, Idella. Well, it's quite a trick. It really is. I can't do it. No, I can't do it. I, uh, I'm going to have to practice. You teach me, okay? C. 
Lee, why, you know, I don't know. It's all a part. All right. Oh, now I got it. Now. <laughs> 1870, you're eight years old when the South mourns the death of a gallant American, Robert E. Lee. In New York, that same year, construction begins on the Brooklyn Bridge. And that same year, you snitch something for the first and last time in your entire life. Not the Brooklyn Bridge. You kind of, uh, here to surprise you and tell us about that are two of your eight surviving children, Jack and Helen. Jack Ward and Mrs. Helen Howard. Here's Jack. <laughs> Don't pull mommy apart. My goodness, Helen. She's so pretty up here. <laughs> Jack, what about this story when your mother was eight years old? Well, well, I often, my mother often told us about the time her and her mother went to see her Mrs. Reed. And she also told us how she found this little shiny bottle of hair oil. <laughs> Mrs. Right? Reed didn't know nothing about it. She took it, huh? Mm, what That's happened? What, you said. what happened to you, uh, Grandma Ward, when your mother found out you'd taken that shiny hair oil? But you got some peachy roots like it would be today. <laughs> I never forgot it from that day to this. I never touched nothing else that don't belong to me. But that ribbon settled me for life. And, and I teach it to my children. Yes. I was going to say, Mrs. Howard, Helen, uh, was your mother uh, strict with you and your brothers and sisters? Yes, Ma used kindness, Mr. Edwards, and she also used those French fishes. <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing, none of our children has gotten any trouble. I should say not. Thank you, Helen Howard and Jack Ward. Jack, you're with the YMCA in Worcester, Massachusetts. Yes, right, well. That's wonderful. You'll see. Oh. Mother, you <laughs> Seventy-one, you're nine years old, Grandma Ward, when Mrs. O'Leary's cow is supposed to have kicked over the lamp that started the great Chicago fire. You're working on the plantation picking cotton at ten cents a day. 1873, you're eleven, Grandma Ward, when the proud citizens of San Francisco ride their very first cable car. And that year, a hotel owner in Jacksonville, North Carolina, wants you to live with his family and take care of the baby his wife's expecting. Now, uh, what did he promise to uh, give you if you had a baby? He a real doll. No, baby, but he never gave him to me. He didn't? No. And that's the first, uh, well, the doll baby I think you got, didn't you? Yeah, but I made it myself with my doll baby. I see. But he was nice to me, just like a father. His father couldn't be any better to me. He teach me everything to be nice to me. Yeah. Well, to tell us what happened then, to help us, here's your daughter, Mrs. Lavinia McIntyre, and your son, Bill Ward. Here's Lavinia and Bill. <laughs> what else did this uh, hotel owner promise your mother, Lavinia, Mrs. McIntyre? He promised Mama that he would give her education. He treated her in every way as a member of his own family. But he wouldn't let him go to school. So when Mom was 16 in 1878, she returned to her home and went to school for two more years and learned to read and write. Thank you, Mrs. Lavinia McIntyre and Bill Ward of the Thompson Wire Company in Worcester. Okay. Edison perfects the electric light. Eight days before your 18th birthday, you marry William Henry Ward, a former slave you've known since childhood, a marriage that's to lead to 18 children, eight of whom are still alive. Are you youngsters learning a lot about Grandma Ward that you didn't know? Huh? You thought I was all just giving out cookies and playing with you and all that, didn't you? Well, uh, don't go away, you kiddies. You stick around. We have lots more to tell about Grandma Ward, but right now, Let's all look in on this surprising scene. Hey, you! Three to one, you've got soft spots in your teeth. Who, me? Yes, you. And you, too. It's three to one, you've got soft spots in your teeth right now. These weak areas are where cavities usually start. But it's not too late. Change to Crest the toothpaste that stops soft spots from turning into cavities. Watch. Decay often begins in tiny soft spots that regular toothpastes pass by. Crest hardens those soft spots, stops soft spots from turning into cavities. At the same time, Crest strengthens the entire tooth against decay. 
That's because of Crest's own special fluoride called Floristan. And flavor, Crest tastes wonderful, brightens your teeth, keeps your breath fresh and sweet all day. So start your family brushing regularly with Crest, the toothpaste that stops soft spots from turning into cavities. Thank you very much, Bob Warren. Now back to This Is Your Life, Mrs. Aris Ann Ward, former slave, now beloved citizen of Worcester, Massachusetts. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. 1880. You're 18, Grandma Ward. The year President Garfield is assassinated, and on October 22nd, your first child is born, James Abraham Garfield Ward. Besides doing your own housework and bringing up your children, you work in a cotton field alongside your husband. And you do more than just raise the cotton. What else did you do with the cotton, Grandma? Well, Walker? I raised the cotton and, and picked the seed out of it and cut it and spin it and wove it in the loom and made my husband working clothes with cotton. 1883. <laughs> You're 21 years old, Grandma Ward, one year before the cornerstone of the Statue of Liberty is laid. And you undergo a tragic experience. And here to help us tell about this is your youngest surviving daughter, Mrs. Irene Basie. Here's Irene. <laughs> Irene, just what was this tragic experience? You want to sit down here by Mommy? There you are. What was this tragic experience? Well, my pa went to a friend's funeral on a Saturday, and whenever he turned home, that house was burned down. So now in order to get a new house built, they had a house notching. They had a what? House notching. What's a house notching, Grandma? Well, they cut the logs they were going in, in, in the woods, you know. The logs about so big. Yes, ma'am. And, and they They'd make a gable and rafters out of it, I guess, they, eh? They cut notches in the logs like that, then fit an inch foot log in, in the notch, you know. Yes, have a big dinner and a whole lot of men come to notch up the house. And you cook the dinner for all these people? Cook the dinner for all these people. And then when they, when they get the notched up, they have to have time to put the rafters on and the gable into the house. If they have time, sometimes they don't have sometime time. Sometimes you have to cook another dinner to get them back for that, I guess. So An old American neighborly custom that still exists in many parts of our country. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Irene Basie. Good morning, Grandma. Oh, my Lord. 1889, the year of the Johnstown Flood, when you are 29 years old. You and your children join your husband, William, who had gone uh, north to Connecticut because he could make a dollar a day on a farm there. 1898, this is the year of the outbreak of what war, children? Which of you can tell us what war? Yes, Louis? This, the American, the Spanish-American War. Good boy. Where'd you learn that? In school. Well, oh, naturally, naturally. <laughs> and you, Grandma Ward, have moved your family to Worcester, Massachusetts, yes. where you're now living. And here you bring up your children at the same time, do housework for various employers. Rock of ages, clear for me. 1913, after 34 years of happy marriage, your husband, William, passes away. You continue working, and you help to bring up your children's children. You have 13 grandchildren, five of them boys, all of whom served in World War II. And here to represent your grandchildren is one of them, Lonnie Howard. Here's Lonnie. <laughs> your grandmother... Your grandmother had a great influence on your life, didn't she, Lonnie? Yes, yeah, she did, Ralph. Uh, my mother and father were in show business, and Grandma helped raise me. They were away a lot. She taught me how to cook. She also told me to honor my mother and my father. And so when I went into the Army, I became a cook. I was in the, with the quartermaster. In 20, the 22nd quartermaster. 22nd quartermaster. 22nd quartermaster. quartermaster. And you also saw considerable combat in North Africa, Italy, and Germany, winning five battle stars, a worthy descendant of this wonderful lady. Thank you, Lonnie Howard. Now with Sears Roebuck in Worcester. Thank you. I love to tell the story. At the age of 90, Grandma Ward, you feel that your eyesight is failing and you want to do something for your daughters while you still can. That's right. Well, here's one of those daughters, the daughter with whom you now live and who accompanied you on the plane trip here, Mrs. Lillian Phelps. Lillian Phelps. <laughs> Lillian, <laughs> what did your mother do for you and your sisters? 
Well, Mother, she, when she was a very young girl, she learned to make the uh, lovely patch quilts. Yes. So one day she decided that she wanted to make us uh, one, so she made me one and four, uh, one for each one of my four sisters, and this is the one she has made for me. Well, let's have a look at it. Five of them all together. Five eh? all together. All right, see. She did this at 90 years old. Five. Uh, what is the pattern of this? What pattern is this, Grandma? Cabin, they call it log cabin. Log cabin pattern. How many patches would you say, Lily? Oh, I would say there's about 6,000 or more. Yes. Made uh, each patch with love, too, yes, if you believe I'm that. Sure that. Grandma Ward is not only an expert needlewoman and mentally alert, but extremely agile. I'm told, Grandma, you can place the tips of your fingers to the floor without bending your knees, and I think that is terrific. <laughs> now, none of your children can even do that, can you? No, sir. Ima you gonna try it? <laughs> Don't, uh, I, I'm not asking you to, but if you, uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> Are you? Mother, thank you very much. Oh, my. Grandma Ward, you're now 95 years young, and youth is grateful to you. And here is yet another grateful young friend of yours, Becky Hazard. Come on out, Becky, all the way from Massachusetts. <laughs> Stand over here and tell us about this wonderful lady, Becky. Well, Ralph, on my 18th birthday, Grandmother gave me a $25 bank account. And I appreciated that because I knew it was a sacrifice. But Grandmother's always just simple. She certainly is. Thank you, Becky Hatcher. Thank you so much. You'll see her later at a party we've arranged for you, Grandma, at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, where all of your family and friends have been staying. Two of your sons were unable to be with us tonight, Grandma Ward, Daniel and Luther in Grafton, Massachusetts, but they're watching in right out there. And our stage here would hardly be big enough to hold all your descendants, including 13 grandchildren, 24 great-grandchildren, and seven great-great-grandchildren. So we just gathered most of them together back east. Uh, we had a film taken, that motion picture there that you just saw to surprise you. This includes five great-great-grandchildren you've never seen. That's right, Jack. Isn't that something? Well... one of those great-great-grandchildren you've never seen singing one of your favorite hymns. Two-year-old Gary Parker and his mother, your great-granddaughter Vivian Parker. Here's Gary. This is your great-great-granddaughter whom you've never seen. This is Vivian. And this is Gary. Come on, sit over here by Grandma. Uh, do we say Grandma or Great-Great or Great-Great-Great-Great-Grandma? We don't know. Gary, you can really sing, boy. Idella, you move back, honey, and, and let Vivian in there, would you? Miss Parker, you sit down. And uh, I understand he can recite the alphabet. And he can also sing, then, says the alphabet, too. But not backwards, I'll no, bet you. No. <laughs> well, children, you've certainly learned a lot. You didn't know about your good friend and neighbor, Grandma Ward, haven't you, right? All right. Now, uh, out of the strife, of the war between the states. You've seen this nation welded into the greatest power, Grandma Ward, the greatest power for peace our world has ever known. You've seen countless millions from the oppressed lands across the sea find refuge and opportunity in America. You've seen the population of the United States grow from some 32 million to, well, at the time of your birth, that was to 170 million now. You've seen the living wage of your neighbors rise from 10 cents a day to a minimum of $1 an hour. You've been a part of this vast panorama of change from the horse and buggy age to the jet age. And through your own goodness and kindness, you have helped make America great. This is your life, Mrs. Aris and Ward. breathe for a minute here, kiddies. Well, <laughs> we show all the gals watching how to look their exciting best any season of the year with Liquid Prell Shampoo. Wouldn't you love radiantly alive looking hair? Spring blossom fresh and fragrant and so sweetly clean. 
radiantly alive hair, caressably soft and inviting as a summer breeze. Radiantly alive hair, breathlessly bright, sparkling and glowing as winter stars. Yes, radiantly alive hair for you with new Liquid Prell shampoo. New Liquid Prell is extra rich. That's why it leaves your hair looking radiantly alive. Some shampoos are so thin they're watery and wasteful. Some others so thick and cloudy they can actually dull your hair. How gloriously different Liquid Prell is. Not too thin, not too thick, but just right with radiant beauty in every drop. It leaves your hair looking radiantly alive because it's extra rich. For your next shampoo, try Extra Rich Liquid Prell. Thank you very much, Bob Warren. And now, Mrs. Ward, let's see what the future holds in store for you. To begin with, Marshall Jewelers of New York City have custom designed for you this beautiful uh, gold charm bracelet. See, each charm there means something, you see. And Prell also has a complete film of tonight's program for you. I'll leave this here so you can get it. And so that you can show that film to all your friends, thank you, Bob, we'd like to present you with a 16 millimeter Bell and Howell sound projector and, and camera, too. There's the camera over there, right, Bob? Now, Mrs. Ward, we've been told by none other than the Honorable James O'Brien, mayor of the great city of Worcester, Massachusetts, that you are most certainly one of its most honored and beloved citizens. And so, in your honor, Laurel Street in Worcester, Massachusetts, will no longer be called Laurel Street, but upon a resolution of the entire city council, will henceforth be called Aris Ann Ward Street. Of course, the children of Worcester have always been your first and primary concern. Now, the new playground in the Great Brook Valley Gardens will henceforth be known as the Aris Ann Ward Playground, too. As a lasting tribute to... Uh, your kindness and understanding and love of children. And to help provide the much needed equipment for this playground, our sponsor, Prell Shampoo, together with Mr. Don R. Grimes, president of the more than 6,000 IGA food stores from coast to coast throughout the United States and Canada, as part of IGA's community builder program, are sending a check in the amount of $1,000 to Mayor O'Brien for this equipment for your playground for these children. As a personal gift to you, Prell would like to replace your seven-year-old antiquated television set with this brand new, magnificent Magnavox color television set, a masterpiece of beauty performance design because it's a Magnavox. Here, too, is our check in the amount of $500, and it's just for you to spend however you want it, Grandma Ward. This is your life, Mrs. Ari Van Ward, the life of self-esteem which exemplifies great poet thought Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. And yet, Grandma, you'll never really be old. Good night, and God bless you. Our guests were flown here by TWA, Trans World Airlines, who now fly the newest and most luxurious airplane in the skies. Fly the finest. Fly TWA Super G Constellation. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that none of you will want to miss next week's show because it's someone you all know and love. It's the story of an American farm boy who couldn't even talk our language and who through determination and talent has won a secure place in the hearts of all of us. Next week, then. This is Your Life is a Ralph Edwards production. Produced by Axel Gruenberg and directed by Richard Gottlieb. This is Your Life has been presented by Crest Toothpaste with Fluoristan and by new Liquid Prell, the shampoo that's extra rich to leave your hair looking radiantly alive. Be sure to watch the Loretta Young Show next Sunday night over most of these same stations.